I'm going to, I'm just going to put this on here. I've got three other tapes I just put up, so I'm going to say I did a medical malpractice book uh, about mind control murders. Larry Flint was shot March 6th of um, 78. That was one of them. The guy was programmed, and he mentions here, I know who was responsible for his shooting. He mentions Larry McDonald, one of the doctors I wrote about in my medical malpractice book, and he mentions Kathy, his wife, that was a candidate. And this is, I'm showing Snowden, Edward Snowden, because he tried to tell you, and that's just a touch of the iceberg, uh, what's going on with the government. They're really into mind control, mass. At this time, they can mass armies and um, and the modified behavior. And <laughs> I haven't heard, this isn't funny. I laugh because it's so ludicrous. That's what one of the FBI agents told me. They, he told me I still had a car furnished by Flint, and um, he told me up in Grotto's I had the, par, the car per, parked around back, and I was working in a convenience store pumping gas. He came in often. He was retired up there, he said, but then later I remembered a photograph of him at Brown Engineering. He was working there. And he was with my husband. I had no, this is back in about 62, so I had no idea that later I was going to meet him and he was FBI. But this is what he told me. He said, they've made it so ludicrous that everybody knows you're telling the truth. But, and they have a chance to help you or walk away. Well, they walked. They couldn't walk fast enough. And instead of helping, they hurt me. So anyway, if you want to see who, why, I thought it was because of the book. It's because of who I am. But I wanted to say this. This is what really I wanted to put on this tape. My father's Edward VIII. I found out in 83. The Brits told me. I was brought to Moulton, Alabama. I just got these photos, by the way. This is me. And that's Lana Dempsey. She was one that I had to call mother. This is a psychopath. She was um, killed her twins, Carl. And the date was even changed on birth certificates, the birth dates, which is illegal. I mean, it's it's been horrible all the way through it, but this was me growing up. That's my dad. This is the double at Mary Simpson. 99 or 100 years seal on it, a total lie. This is George O'Keefe, my aunt, my mother's Claudia Ruth O'Keefe. A teacher, and of course, George is an artist. These are bad control murders that later happened, but they were done in patterns after I wrote the book. Now, what I wanted to get to here was there was an addendum to my father's forced abdication. And, um, that, uh, my father always meant to come back and take it back. Um, cause all the lies. And my father was a decent man, so to have orchestrated this whole thing, you could see how much power the New World Order, or Illuminati, or whatever you want to call them, they're the same people, the Kennedys, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, the Jews, my own uncle, George VI, the illegal. So Elizabeth's illegal, and yes, she's always known. Um, so there was an addendum to it that said that if my father ever had an heir, that it would not disinherit the heir. So I was born in 39, the year that my kidnapping was being plotted. That's my Uncle George when he's just come from Canada, given away everything illegally, by the way, treaties and all that were signed in planning my kidnapping, Victoria the second, his niece, his own brother's daughter, that he's helped take my father down. So there's the uh, the movie was made of the King's Speech, total lie. It's been the way the whole thing was carried out. So now the, there was an addendum there that said that if my father had an heir, and he did me, that uh, it would not disinherit the, the heir. That... Uh, Anyway, I was born, and, and it's all legal. I know that much. It's under seal, 99 years seal. So now that I want to go to, I did the book. If anybody cares to go back and get the prior tape, 
it's too much to put it all on, and I'm sitting up here probably waking up the complex here. I don't know. I don't think they can hear me. I have to be quiet when I put <laughs> It's so hideous, this whole mess. Uh, they say it would rock the foundations of the uh, money market and everything if they told about me and my kidnapping. Well, isn't that something, that it's okay to do all this to me and all the benefits that people, except the British, Look at the hell the Brits and the Germans have gone through. And some Americans tried to help me, and I always hoped that I could repay those that helped me and that justice, only God could do it now, uh, would come to those who committed the crimes. And part of them are dead, of course. So here's what I wanted to say now. I, I thought it was because of the book. And uh, the doctors in it, Larry McDonald and... and um, Yes, Congressman Doctor and Gene Strokerman was shot in the office at Piedmont where Doctor uh, uh, McDonald, Congressman, he he practiced medicine. He was urologist. She was shot, and the connection that I had to her was through by Attorney Gene Kaiser, a former uh, Fulton County Atlanta DA. So now then, uh, she was shot in Stroker, uh, Doctor. Um, Oh, God, I've forgotten his name. I put it on the other, though, who is not a nice man, believe me. <laughs> so, so many people wanted me dead that broke the law. I told the truth. I have told the truth through this all. And God knows that nobody, unless it's the my country, I'm sure knows a lot of it. But I, I wish that it could all be told before I die and I could see my sons again. I don't have any idea where they are. But now I wanted to go back to, I moved it from Moonraker, and that's when I was doing the book, in the license kill, Larry Flint was shot in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and the person that shot him and killed his attorney was programmed under mind control, and that's what I was writing a book about. And um, Lawrenceville, Georgia has a place in here more than once, but this is what happened. I moved up there and put the apartment in my name, uh, my deposit. There was no reason for it ever to be out of my name or anything. And this is where I put it in other tape. Got a letter from the FBI because it was in now their office, but so was my ex husband, John Guy Childers. So um, I had a letter from them June the 23rd. By the way, that's my father's birthday. And then, of course, the year was different 79. And so much happened. I realized I was lured out of uh, um, out to Texas to his sister Laura May Childers Klein. She's CPA, <coughs> CPA in Abilene, and I got out there, and it was all made. I called her before I left in March of '80 and told her that I was on my way and everything was okay for me to live there for a couple of weeks and try to get a job and. Uh, if I did, I was going to bring the boys out there. Never did I give up my apartment. Never. None of it. Anyway, when I got to Dallas and called her, suddenly her attitude changed, and I could turn around and go back. I turned around and went back, and they had, in the few days I was gone, they allowed my husband, John Guy Childers, her ex-husband, to move my furniture into another apartment within the same complex there, same place. And uh, now the... Uh, lease was in his name using my deposit and he'd moved my furniture. I couldn't get a key. So April through the day of 80, I had everything put in me and should have died. It was a living hell. Here's what I want to say on this one. Uh, Twilight Joyce, Helen Childers, she lived at those apartments. I've never met the woman. In fact, I didn't know, really know her name so I just uh, Googled and come up with it. She lived, she lived in Lawrenceville, and she lived at Marietta in the apartments, uh, Laurelwood Apartments, when I did. I never met her. But my husband had her ex-husband because therein becomes a part of uh, my coming back, and I don't know if they, they weren't married at the time, but they were dating or planning on it. Because I had the antifreeze put on, uh, put in me, and Lois Pearson was the one that helped with that. And I know the doctors, you'd have to see the fiasco when I went to the emergency room 
to have a talk screen done because I knew